I'd like to show you a heat exchanger right out of leak check and production. This is waiting to go into a stock unit. This heat exchanger, what we see here is a standard heat exchanger, and I want you to pay close attention to the copper coils and the fins. This is what a heat exchanger is supposed to look like. But with time and in production, a lot of particulates and braze alloys and waxes and oils deposit themselves on the fins of the heat exchanger, which cause a litany of issues and problems. And we'll be speaking to those in a little later as we reference to some pictures. But for now, I wanted you to see a brand new, proper looking heat exchanger. As we previously discussed out on the shop floor when we were reviewing heat exchangers and fabrications, we were making comment to that the heat exchangers are often ignored by customers or they just don't know what to check or how often or what the implications really are. If we look at the screen here, here we have a heat exchanger that's in production right now for one of our turbo treater lines or Titans. And when we look at the cooling coils on the heat exchanger, we can actually see the fins in between the coils and the spacing in between the tubes. This allows the nitrogen or argon gas to flow freely across it and allows the heat exchanger to do its job and to pull the heat out of the load for cooling. What happens with time is graphite dust, debris, braze alloys, thermocouple wires, dirty parts, parts unfortunately that go into the furnace that might have waxes, paraffins, or oils on them that evaporate, find their way to this cooling coil and condense onto the cooling coil. And once the cooling coil is exposed to a sticky substance, it actually becomes a magnet. And then it actually accelerates its ability to hold graphite dust, dirt, and debris. And the end result is reduced cooling efficiency of the furnace, longer cycle times, and often customers complain about dirty, contaminated parts because during the cooling cycle, when the hot gas first hits that coil, it reliberates those constituents and they jump off of the coil back onto the sensitive parts. I have an example here of a customer's furnace that they accidentally ran some parts in and add a little bit too much oil on them. The oil found its way to the cooling coils, which it will, and they didn't understand this and they didn't think anything was wrong with it. And then the outcome of it was very catastrophic for this customer. If we look at the coil, we can see here's the coil out of their furnace. Basically, it's the same coil as the one I just showed you, but you can see it's all impregnated with debris, felt, graphite dust, and oils. When we look up close, we can actually see layers and layers and labors, layers of fiber packs, insulation, KOO, graphite. The cores are basically blocked off preventing the argon and nitrogen from getting through the fins and through the gaps that are supposed to be here to facilitate proper cooling. So this heat exchanger was basically rendered useless and the customer's cooling times were two times that of what it should have been and the parts were coming out dirty and they just didn't have a handle on what could possibly be causing this. So the heat exchanger should be inspected depending on your specific processes I guess once every five years if possible, we should get a bore scope or open it up and have a look at it and see where it stands in its life cycle as far as retention of debris from the hot zone. Again, it's more related to the processes you're running, but the five year mark is a good inspection point. So the heat exchanger, normally in a turbo treater and a Titan furnace, which is called an internal quench system compared to an external quench system, whereas the heat exchanger and the cooling motor sit adjacent to the furnace outside of the furnace proper. The Titan and Turbo Treater employ an internal cooling methodology, motor and cooling coil. The cooling coil and the Turbo Treater and Titan are mounted in the back of the furnace where the heat exchanger is, and then when the hot zone goes in, there's shielding and baffling and gas entry and exit ports where the nitrogen and argon are come in, they're drawn in with the fan assembly. The argon or nitrogen gas is blown across the parts after it's heated by the load. The heat exchanger then extrapolates that heat and pulls the BTUs out, cools the gas off. The gas then recirculates back into the furnace. And next I'll show you a picture of that specific gas flow so it's a little easier to understand. So in a turbo treater, and the Titan is similar, just the uh, gas flow patterns are different. Uh, the picture we have here is a turbo treater. We can see that we have the cooling motor, the fan, and then the heat exchanger in the back. So the fan is drawing the hot gas into the fan, 
The fan then takes it through the heat exchanger. Then from the heat exchanger, it's discharged back into the plenum where the gas then is impinged back onto the work. It pulls the heat out, the gas exits the port, it returns back down again into the heat exchanger system from the fan and back. So it's a recirculatory system where the gas, once it's put in the furnace, continues to recirculate across the heat exchanger, which pulls the heat out of the subsequent load in the furnace itself. So when we look at the heat exchanger, and we discussed five years is a good point to get a good look at it to see where we stand. It could be clean after five years. It could be dirty. If we exhibit any of the symptoms we've discussed previously, it would warrant a sooner inspection. But as a rule of thumb, it would go without saying that if we're replacing the hot zone ever and or working on the gas cooling motor and fan assembly and it's removed for servicing, absolutely at that time we should be getting a, a look visually at the heat exchanger to see where it's at and not wait for the five-year mark.